Yeah, so it's part two of that. <clears throat> Same norm, did. But yeah, let's go. You know, I look out, I see President Bill Clinton. You know, I see Secretary of State Madeleine Albright. You know, media mogul Rupert Murdoch. You know, uh, broadcast legend Larry King. You know, uh, pornographer Larry Flint. You know, <laughs> Dick Morris. The list is starting to drop off a little, folks, but <laughs> still, you get the idea. It's daunting. <laughs> show you how they go. Mm -hmm. uh, Michigan, so you can do it to the camera or you can do it to me, it doesn't matter. Either. Michigan man Curtis Peterson received a 15 year prison sentence for having sex with his pet pit bull. <laughs> What's that, Lassie? Woof, woof. Grandpa got stuck in a well? <laughs> woof, woof. Oh, you got raped. <laughs> 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 they say the world's a smaller place than it used to be, but I think that's an optical illusion based on me becoming a big fat guy. <laughs> it's only now if people were to Google a picture of Savile, uh -huh. knowing that he was a horrible um, pedophile and general all-round rotten person, that you'd look at it you'd go, of course. I mean, now you look at it, yeah. but yes, that makes perfect sense. I mean, with these like weird, he would I wear like weird. I knew about the pedophile. He would wear things a bit like this. I knew the, <laughs> I knew the bit about the pedophile, but I didn't know about the all-around bad person part. <laughs> yes, well, I was, I, I suddenly realized that I couldn't remember all of his crimes. Yeah. So let's say quite, Jimmy <laughs> Savile goes into a, a room and a guy is like, you know, the person is, can't move, they're paralyzed. Yeah. And he doesn't act upon that person. <laughs> right. Who's to say it's bad? Yeah. That's me. Fella. I'll say it's bad. But the lady is just lying there. You think her life's. Uh, you yeah. don't think that's. She's just lying there. All of a sudden, a great entertainer. A, a knight of the realm. Fucks her. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even like you say, uh, you're uh, unwant, uh, unwanted, WNT, uh, allegations against Michael Jackson. There had to be kids that were like, well, this is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. This is not some old priest. I'm just wondering about I have a priest, by the way. Can I just ask that I'm because... Ca I'm, ca I'm not Catholic, but I know... You a have priest. a priest anyway? I know a priest. Yeah. And I feel sorry for them because most of them don't fuck children. I just <laughs> yeah. want to put that on the record, that more teachers fuck children than priests, <laughs> okay. and yet teachers are heroes and... and Finally, someone brave enough to say it, <laughs> which is great. There's Charles Woodson. How about that? Oh, what a season he had. That is actually a great episode of that because Steve Merchant is just the right counterbalance to Norm. Like, he's very kind of, well, he's Steve Merchant, do you know what I mean? But, yeah, yeah, that is a great podcast because them two's kind of back and forths are brilliant. Great, Manny. He became the first defensive player to win the Heisman Trophy. And congratulations, Charles. That is something that no one can ever take away from you. Unless you kill your wife and a waiter, in which case... <laughs> Have you ever done anything in your long and storied career that you consider specifically to be in bad taste as you look back on it? Maybe at the time you thought it was a good play, but you look uh, back on it and you think that was in bad taste. Well, sometimes, like in stand-up, I'll do jokes that are, uh, that I, th like one time I was doing this thing in San Francisco and they were all gay uh, people in the audience, they told me, so I figured I'd in do In San Francisco? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured I'd do stuff about gay people so that they could relate to yeah, it. Yeah, it's warm up. Right. <laughs> They love that. And so I was talking about, because I went to this gay pride parade, and I saw in it there were these uh, old men and old ladies, like, with these uh, signs that said, we are proud of our gay son, you know? And so I was saying, that's an odd thing to be proud of, you know, because it's not an achievement, you know? It's not, like, something you work all your life to be gay or anything like that. And I, I just wondered, I just, I, I had a hard time believing that these 50, 60-year-old men are actually bragging you know, at work, like there, hey, uh, Bill, you know, uh, my kid, oh my God, we're proud of him, Johnny. He uh, uh, graduated from Harvard, you know, a first in his class, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, now he's articling over at a law firm, and uh, oh yeah, he loves cock. <laughs> you know? This kid. He can't get enough cock in his mouth, his ass, this kid's always cock. I gotta. 
I got a picture of the boy here sucking another man's cock. I want to show it to him. True. To watch the maturation of you as an artist, to realize it took you nine and a half minutes to get around to the sucking cock stuff. <laughs> and in California, Christian Brando was released from state prison Monday after serving nearly five years for killing his sister's boyfriend. Meanwhile, his father, Marlon Brando, ate nine pizzas. <laughs> Yeah, Ricky Lake, you know, uh, she is really is an animal lover, though. She has three cats, two dogs, and a big ass that follows her around <laughs> everywhere. Uh, we're running out of time, but I would be remiss here if I didn't bring up something. People have been uh, bothering me about this for months and months. People come on the show Uker. and they say, when, the next time you see Norm MacDonald, he's got some tremendous stories about the great Bob Euchre. Now, do you have a story... You can tell us about Bob Euchre, voice well, Bob, of the Milwaukee Brewers. Well, Bob Euchre is, uh, is one of my best friends. He's a great man. I know Artie told a story <laughs> when he was here, and Bob was not too thrilled with that. But, uh, it's Artie Lang you're talking Artie about. Artie Lang, yeah. yeah. But uh, Bob is a very, very funny man, and, uh, and uh, I, I go often go in the booth with him, you know. Oh, sure. So uh, one time we were there, <laughs> and uh, John Fogarty was in the audience. Mm -hmm. You know, a fortunate son, you know? So uh, John Fogarty was there. So Bob Euchre is a very uh, interesting guy. He thinks of everybody as the same. He doesn't think of people as stars or anything like that. He's a very down-to-earth yeah. guy. So uh, he was talking to me. He says, hey, man, you know that guy? And I go, yeah. He goes, that's uh, John Fogarty, rock and roll singer. <laughs> so I go, yeah. I go, yeah, yeah. I know who it is. He goes, yeah, man. He goes, uh, but I played in a golf tournament with him. He goes, you probably think of him as some that likes to bite the heads off of chickens, but uh, <laughs> this guy can... Uh... That's exactly how I think of him. This guy can get it out of the sand trap like nobody's <laughs> business. So, uh... <laughs> so he goes, he's got a hell of a set of pipes on him. Uh -huh. He goes, uh, uh, come the seventh inning stretch, I'll have him up here, he'll sing for you. <laughs> So I said, no, no, Bob, don't do that. Like, don't have him come up and sing yeah. for me, please, you know? He goes, what's matter, man? Don't you even know who he is? He got all mad. So I go, yes, Bob, I know who he is. He did Creedence Clearwater sure. Revival. Yeah. He goes, yeah, he did all that. <laughs> John Goodman has announced that he will not be returning to Roseanne next year. So how will the show get rid of him on screen? Well, insiders now say that over the last few episodes of the season, Roseanne will gradually eat him. <laughs> there is one country that worries me, though. Not Iraq, not Iran, not North Korea. The only country that really worries me is uh, the country of Germany. I don't know if you guys are history buffs or not, but... Uh... <laughs> In the early uh, part of the previous century, Germany decided to go to war. And uh, who did they go to war with? The world. <laughs> that had never been tried before. And uh, so you figure that would take about five seconds for the world to win, but uh, no, it was actually close. And uh, Germany decides again to go to war, and again it chooses as its enemy the world. <laughs> <laughs> and this time they have that guy, Schrankly, Schrankly, that guy. And I'm not even going to dignify him by saying his name, but I think you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but you'd think at that point the world will go, listen, Germany. Here's the deal. You don't get to be a country no more on account of you keep attacking the world. I mean, what, do you, what do you think? You're Mars or something? I s still think that's probably one of my all-time favorite jokes. And it really is a great example of Norm. 
how Norm just has an ability to like reduce something down to something so to its most basic form that no what is so like simple no one really thinks of it and it just makes him genius. Because yeah, that is a great point, who did Jeremy? Yeah, that's one of my favourite norm jokes. I say a lot of them like to be fair, no, quite a lot of them in this I I hadn't actually seen in both parts. There was a good few I haven't seen. But some of them are just classic and some of them are just funny. Especially when you haven't seen them for ages. But like it is him, it's his delivery and yeah, it is he's just hilarious. Yeah. You're not allowed to be a country <laughs> anymore. But yeah. Yeah, that's the reaction. 